children of God by God's grace through faith. And now what he did, does, he says, I want to bless uh, Spencer and Bob and all, everybody that comes to me through Christ. The church has no power to save nobody. I have no power. No priest, no pastor, no shepherd has no power to save anybody. There is one Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. There's one mediator. There's one that died on the cross. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God, and He's the only Savior of the world. And He gave His life once and for all to clear us of every sin that we would ever do, every sin of Adam, whatever. We are clean, made holy, sanctified, set apart to God. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. He bought us back by the shed blood of Christ. Now, he says, okay, I got you in my family, Bob. I want you to know I have an inheritance for you. All my children. Look at there. There's Susan right there. Here's your pretty. There's Willie there. Look at Willie there. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it, right? We're not, we are in the family of God. Now that we are in the family of God, all the trillion beings treasury of God belongs to us. Now, Willie, Willie's got a lot of money. You can stand up here for a minute. <coughs> I understand you're loaded, is that right? You know something I don't know. <laughs> it, when you do oh, pass... I know that. <laughs> Now, there's Frank and me. Yes, sir. You, you, you consider us brothers, don't you? Of course. You have us in your will? No. <laughs> Not yet. Well, uh, <laughs> well, normally you wouldn't put us in your will. Right. But you do have people in your will. Yes, sir. Because they're in your family. Yes, sir. Now, if we were in your family, you'd have us down on the piece of paper uh, to receive some of the, the, of the uh, uh, inheritance. That's Ye true? Yes, sir. Would you leave your boat to me? Yes, sir. Frank, Frank don't, don't like to fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many of you know I'm going to hold him pretty close? <laughs> He's got me in his will. God's got you and me in his will. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he can't put you, your name down until you become one of his children. Then you will inherit... The inheritance that's kept for you in heaven where moss and IRU and whatever you are, WXYZs, cannot get. Yep. We have an inheritance kept for us in heaven. Yep. But if you do decide to put it, Frank and me, it's Robert W. Tilton, T-I-L-T-O-N. Okay. <laughs> now, when you think of that, you think of God's grace. It's, it's, it's not just being saved. Oh, thank God we're saved from hell. If you go to hell, there's, there's no exits in hell. If you go there, that's it. But God did not want us to go to hell. He loved us so much, he sent his son to die. And for somebody to reject the inheritance that God has for them, shame on them. It is God's will that no man perish, but all should be saved. Then why do people go to hell? They choose to. They choose to by rejecting God's mercy and grace and loving kindness and all that God is. They reject all of that and say, I don't want none of that. Then what is there left? What is there left? They have chosen themselves to take the road to hell. And that's not God's will. It's God's will that everyone be saved and come into the full benefit and the full inheritance that God has for his family. You know, I know we think of our earthly family. But see, we all are brothers and sisters. Everyone that accepts Christ and is born again by the Spirit of God are brothers and sisters. So I want you to see yourself in two families. Yes, we all have our individual family, but we are a family, and we all have the same father, and the Bible says there's one father, come on now, follow me, one faith, one baptism, one body, one Savior, 
Simple, not complicated. Brother, good to see you. Sister, good to see you. Brother, good to see you. You got a will? Uh, the name's T-I-L-T-O-N. <laughs> sister? 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 Brother? And so, we are the family of God. Now, here's what happened at Calvary. Good old water. This is you. The water. This is you. This glass is you. You're inside the glass. And what God did, the Bible says that he that knew no sin, if that was on the board, we could, oh, look at there. Very good. I hit um, Romans, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Put, put the um, King James up there for me, if you will. For he had made him, now who is him? Remember when you read the Bible, find out who him is, who he is, who whom is, and you are, and all of those things. For he, that is God, has made him, Christ, to be sin for us. I want that to sink in. Christ became sin with your sins and my sins. How many has never heard that before? Let me see your hands. You've never heard that, but I just up there. We've all heard that? Good. Very good. Now notice this. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, if God has made you, now catch that word, made you righteous, why are you fighting for? Just receive it. He made you righteous. Now, I know you're thinking, but I don't do everything right. I'm glad to hear that. I don't either. <laughs> We're not talking about our behavior here. Who can I pick on? I'm going to give you a break, Willie. Give Charles a break. Susan, we've been married 60 years. I hope we can go through with this party next Sunday. This might end it all right here. Whatever. That's what that means. Whatever. If Christ took all your sins and he became sin with your sins, what sin do you have left? No. I didn't hear no you. No sin. No sin. All right. It's, it really pays to sit on the front seat, don't it? <laughs> Spencer, if the Lord has taken every sin and became sin with your sins, what sin do you have? None. Now, you, don't need, you need to get that down in your spirit. I didn't say, you, I didn't say Susan couldn't sin. Right. She can sin any time she wants to, but she don't want to sin. But tell me, if she decides to sin, I would say it this way. She don't want to sin, but let's just say she's tempted and, you know, uh, throws the frying pan at me. Yeah. Okay. And you hear this, boing, yung, 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 yung. you know she struck oil. And she said, oh, I didn't mean that, Bob. I, I just got angry and I threw it. Now, what does she have to do? She goes and talks to God. And is God faithful? God is just to do what? To forgive her of that sin. And now she's clean again, like she never did it. But now she owes me apologize, apologize. That's okay. apology, and she needs to abandon my head. Have you, have you noticed how it's swelling up here? Now, I prayed for it. My humor would go, but it still comes back, but I'm working at it. 
<clears throat> I knew God took care of that at Calvary. Okay. So, right now, every one of us in this place that are Christians should have no sin on us. But if God shows you that you have sin, then you know what to do. 1 John 1, 9, and it's done. It's finished. It's complete. Now, you might have done a little damage with that sin, and you may have to go to somebody and apologize, okay? Get it straight with them, all right? Get straight with God first, then you come to one another and you apologize. Simple, not complicated. But how many of you know you've got to re repent of pride? See, all of a sudden, this thing might, oh, I couldn't do that. They might think I'm the worst sinner in the world. Ooh, pride. That's a mean one. Isn't it? Anybody here got pride besides Susan? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, let's get back to what I was talking about. If all the sins of Adam, all your sins, were put on Christ. So God takes all your sins and pour them into Christ. All your sins are gone. Who's carrying your sins now? Jesus Christ. You see that? Everybody see it? You better see it. It'll set you free. And the devil will come along and say, you remember that sin you did? 40 years ago. And then, then you say, yeah, but Christ cared that. He became sin with that sin. And devil, you're not going to accuse me. Because if you accept his accusations, you'll go down. Your joy is gone. Now you're under condemnation. Now you're feeling that old sinfulness again. I'm never, I thought I conquered that. I'm never good enough. Nothing you can do to make you good enough. So quit trying. Accept what he's done for you by faith. Now, all the righteousness of God, all the righteousness of God was poured into you. He carried your sins and gave you and me his righteousness. That's it. Finished. Done. Complete. He did it. I didn't do it. The priest didn't do it. The bishop didn't do it. The elder didn't do it. Your daddy couldn't do it for you. He did it. Now you have become righteous with his righteousness. Now drink of him every day. Mm. Say, I'm righteous. Boy, that was a strain for some of you. Go ahead and say it again. I didn't hear you. Woo! So is a man thinketh in his heart? So is that man. Now, this is why we worship God. God, thank you for what you have done for me. I was lost, undone. You've sent Jesus. I'm going to find uh, Charles. Sit right here. I was looking for uh, Rick, but he's up there on the, up there. Turn to uh, 1 Peter 3.18, I think it is. 1 Peter 3.18. 1 Peter 3.18. 1 Peter. How does it feel sitting there? Roy, did you take that chair and put it over there by Charles. Charles, bring your chair over here a little bit. Yeah, put that chair on the other side there. Don't you think Roy looks like Jesus? I said, don't you think Roy looks like Jesus? <laughs> Let your hair grow out a little bit. Grow a beard. Is it up on the board? All right. For Christ the Messiah himself died for sins. Whose sins? 
Okay? Once for all. It is finished. You go back in the Old Testament, and you know it well as well as I do, that the high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies once a year for his sins and for the sins of the nation. But the priests do it out the year. Every day these uh, sacrifices were being offered every day, every day. But Christ was the one sacrifice, once and for all, that deals with Adam's sin all the way until the end of time. So it's done, it's finished. Now, the righteous, who was the righteous? Say it out loud. The righteous, who was that? Jesus. Everybody say, and Jesus. Anybody out there? Jesus. I didn't hear anybody. Say, Jesus. Very good. For the unrighteous. Who was the unrighteous? I said, who was, was the unrighteous? Got that? Now, who is the righteous now? Come on, wave at me. Come on, accept, accept what he did. I mean, that's a slap in his face if you don't accept it. Of course, I know Willie's not going to accept this $100 bill, so I can pull it out. Now, Rachel... If out of the goodness of my heart, oh, I only have 100. Oh, that's just a dollar. Ra Rachel won't even get out of her seat for a dollar. But Willie, wait a minute, give me, give me, wait a minute now. Okay, oh. I want to give you this. Now, let's say he wouldn't take it, but he is. Suppose he didn't take it. That would be an insult to me. Suppose Susan and Missy and, and all the girls fix a big dinner. I think there's going to be a big lunch, a big uh, uh, breakfast next, but I don't come. Oh, I, I, don't, I feel so unworthy. I, I couldn't eat them biscuits and them eggs and sausage and look at that, that passing the goodness around. You know, it might even come back to me. <laughs> all right, let's finish reading that. The just, who's the just? Jesus. For the unjust. Who, who was the unjust? We were. You got to, see, if you read the Bible, you got to understand it. it. It'd be Latin to you if you don't. Are oh, you see that? The just, that was, a, for the unjust, the innocent, who was the innocent? Jesus. Very good. For the guilty, who was the guilty ones? We were guilty. We were sinners. We were lost. But now, Christ died on the cross, and we're on this side of the cross now, and what he's done for us, he made us righteous, he made us innocent again, he sanctified us, he set us apart, he redeemed us, he caused us to be born again, he's the one that will raise us from the dead, he's the one that's given us an inheritance, he's the one that has shed his blood, he's the one that's blood that cleanses us from all sin, he is everything. You read your Bible. Read your Bible. It's all about God doing for you and me. All right. All right, why did he do all of that? What, what, what? That, that he, who's he? That he. Look at it. That he, who's he? Jesus. Might bring us to God. Yes. He died on the cross. He took all of our sins. He made us holy, set us apart, cleansed us, us up, made new creations out of us, that is our inner man, and he brought us to God the Father. All right. I want you to tell your son to come and get me. I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm on, baby, love the good times. I'm lost. Hey, how you doing? Oh, God. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. Oh, oh, oh. What, what is it? Oh, Lord, what do you want me to do? Come on with me. Follow you. Ooh, where are you going? We going down to the next beer joint or where are we going? No, 
hold me down. So you sober up. What you going to do? Yeah, but you got to do something first. <laughs> Stand over there. Put, your, put out your arms. Like this. Where's my nails? You got any nails up there? He shed to his blood. His blood will redeem me. Redeem means bought back. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Your good works, my good works, sheds no blood. The only way we can be redeemed back to God the Father for that He might bring us to God, that Christ might bring us to God, He had to die on the cross, shed His blood, and that blood that was, that was shed by this innocent man, not guilty, Jesus Christ was shed to redeem you and me back to the Father. His blood has been shed 2,000 years ago. Now you've risen, from, you're off the cross. Let's bury you right there. Lay down right there. Okay. <laughs> you're not that old yet. All right, just lay there for a while. He's in the grave. Who's in the grave with him? Lay down there by him. Spencer, <laughs> that'll teach you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. Now, this is important. When Christ died, you and me died. He represents you and me. He died. When Christ died, we died to the law. Romans 7. Read it. When Christ died, we, Spencer is a, a type of us, died towards sin. Sin shall have no power over him because he's dead from sin. Sin is still alive. But he's not subject to sin. That word subject means under the control of the power of sin anymore because when Jesus died, we died with him. That's it. But the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quickening him, and Christ is being raised from the dead, and, and, he's, and we are being raised with him. To, look, you may be seated. To, listen now, totally a new creature. Now you've got to realize man is a spirit, and you live in a body, and you have a soul. Now, have you noticed that, that, that outward word, in, in many ways, you look the same? But you ain't going to look that way forever. This thing goes on. I mean, it's great. These bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So God is so gracious. He's already killed the old man. Did he ever bring me to you? Pardon. Re rewind the tape. All right. Father. Ah, Father. Father. Amen. All right. Both of them. No, wait a minute. We haven't yet. You sit there. You sit there. Now. Nothing personal now. Ah! Where are we seated now? At the right hand side of the Father. The Father has us back. Now you've got to see your salvation more than just. Are you comfortable back there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a break. You guys can sit down. By faith, you accept that. Say, by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, faith is the substance of things not seen yet. But it's your, it's your guarantee that you're going to have what you put your faith in. You've got to see yourself already there as far as God's concerned. It is 
finished. We are seated with Christ. Notice this. We all have been raised together, according to Ephesians, to set with Christ in heavenly places. Seated at the right hand side with the Father. Aren't you glad we didn't have everybody come up and sit on your lap? <laughs> Spared you that, didn't I? Now you've got to see that. You've got to accept that by faith. Because, see, it'll give you power. God's Holy Spirit has the responsibility to make it alive to you. And when you get alive in all of that, who man, ah, ooh, you ever seen a rocket take off? I'm telling you, you will come alive. Do you realize I'm 80 years old and I'm alive? I'm alive. I am alive because I have the revelation of God. I know what the Lord has done. He's cleansed me of all my sins. All my sin, he don't even remember them anymore. The devil does, and he'll remind you now. Man, I got a little extra time here. That he might bring us to God in his human body. He was put to death, but he was made alive in the spirit by God Almighty. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens us. And does all that work that the Bible talks about in us when we put our faith in what the Word says that God has done for us? See, we work at it. We try to make it happen. Well, I'll do this, I'm sure. Wrong road. You are putting yourself in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, right on down the end there. The things I want to do, I can't do. The things... That, uh, that I want to do, I can't. And there you are, that wrestling match between the spirit and the flesh. How do you know that so well, Bob? I, I, I camped out there quite a few years <laughs> trying to make it happen. And then I found it was already done for me. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? We're not talking about hell and heaven here. We're talking about living the victorious Christian life. I'm going to say it again. We are talking about living the Christian life full of joy. You're not worried about every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You're not worried about this. You're not worried about that. You're trusting God. You trust God to save you when you were in the wilderness. Now, now that you are His child, how much more will He do for you now that you are His child? How much more? How much more? How much more? While you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. While you were yet a sinner, He took all your sins, all your faults, everything that didn't please God upon Himself and gave you His righteousness. And now you are righteous, not by your own righteousness, but by His righteousness that pleases God. Now, what is our future? Oh, we have a great future. <clears throat> Turn, if you will, and we'll close on this, or try to anyway. First Peter. First Peter 1, let's start with verse 3. First Peter, chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Praise, honor, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Why? Why bless? Why, why give him honor? Oh, my goodness. When you find out what he has done for you, the only thing you and me can do is praise him and love him. Listen to this. By his boundless mercy, that is God, find out his, who's his, his, God, by his boundless mercy, we have been born again. What did you do to cause yourself to be born again? Nothing. He did it. Now you accept it by faith then the Holy Spirit makes it a reality. And let me say this, if you've, 
and I don't say this to be ugly, but I want to make sure everybody in here knows that they're saved, that they've been born again. If you don't feel like you've been born again, if you don't have some sense of knowing God lives in you, that he, he's the one that causes our spirit man. Remember, our spirit man died. When Adam died, we died with Christ. We all know that. I don't have time to go into all of that. That's why we have to be born again. Our spirit man died, separated us from God the Father. That's why Jesus had to come and clean us up to bring us back to the Father because through Adam, we were separated by Adam's sin and our sins from the Father. And so by His boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4, born anew, born anew into an inheritance. I want you to see that. Born again into an inheritance. Whew. Born again into an inheritance. Let's put it down where we can understand it. Uh, Elizabeth, how you doing today? Good, that's good. You might not know it, but let's just say that you come into this knowledge that your father left you one trillion dollars in the bank. Elizabeth, I really love you. I mean. <laughs> and you didn't know it. And you're living all these years. How old are you? 39? Okay. 39 years you have lived, and you had all this money down at the bank and didn't know it. Then all of a sudden you come into the knowledge that you have an inheritance down at the first federal bank worth $3 million. And all you got to do is go down there, identify yourself, and start drawing some of it out. Would that excite you? Would you do a little jig? Uh, 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 show, show, well, show us a little jig. <laughs> Buddy, I tell you, how many would do a little jig, huh? Uh, put that boy to bed, he's still jigging. Oh, my goodness. See, you got to get that excited. you got more than that. That's temporary. Everything down here is temporary. Now, my name's Jimmy, and I will take all you give me. But we have it. Now, listen. We have an inheritance. Let's finish reading that. Which is beyond the reach of the IRS or change or decay. Imperishable, unsalted, unfading, reserved, reserved, reserved in heaven for each and every one of us. Come on, shout. Now, if you don't want your inheritance, my name's Jimmy, I'll take your part too. Now listen, this inheritance is not going to fade away. It will last you throughout eternities of eternities. Wow, what could that inheritance be? Well, we need to talk about that sometime, but we don't have time today. Now, I'm going to share one more thing, and then we're going to quit, because I'm getting hungry. I know we've all heard the story of the prodigal son. If you've heard the story of the prodigal son, raise your hand. Let me see. Oh, you never have. Okay. The story of the prodigal son, we've always read it, that the youngest son wanted his inheritance and leave his father. And his father gave him his inheritance, and he left. And he went into a foreign land, and he used all of his inheritance on prostitutes and honky-tonk living, ended up in the hog pen, making a long story short, and he finally came to his senses, and said, the servants in my father's house eat better than this, because he was eating from the hog pen. So he's coming back to the father. 
Charles, get your chair. Where's Charles at? Charles, get your chair. Sit over there. Spencer says, give me a break. Right over there. I'll give you a break. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of his name. I know his name is not Charles. That's Charles over there. Bob, come on up here. I mean, Roy. How could I miss Roy Rogers, you know? So, huh? Oi. Roy, yeah, Ro uh, Bob, Bob is my Bob. name. My friends call me Bob. Tilton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, remember me and your. All right, that's. Uh, whoop! <laughs> now he's he's done it. Okay. I did. He did. <laughs> and this is true of all of us. We were in the hog pen, even though we were all dressed and we looked pretty, but we were as lost as we could be. Now he's coming back. He came to his senses. I want you to see this. <sighs> What is the word I'm thinking of? This reunion. Not just in the light of the Son, but in the light of the Father. Having his Son back with him. Can we touch that? Can we touch that? Can you touch that, your mothers or fathers? Can you, can you touch that, that his Son was once lost, but now he's found now, I want you to see, when the father sees the son coming up the road, you know what the father does. My son. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Grab it. That's how much the Lord loves you. He loves you that much, son. He runs to you. See, there's an element within our human nature. Oh, I'm not worthy. Come on. I've been around 80 years. I know all about that stuff. I'm not, it ain't about your worthiness. It's about the love of God in his bosom. So loves you. And what I love about that, oh, you're coming back home, eh? Yeah, you missed your old dad, didn't you? Huh? Uh-huh. You lousy son, you. Come on home. I got some dog food I'll give you. Huh? He never mentioned. The father never mentioned one thing bad that the son did. Come on. Come on now, church. Are you there yet? I'm there. Huh? So glad to have his son. Listen, we don't. Oh, my God, help me. We don't point our anger at people. Remember that. We don't like their sin. But we love you. But we hate the sin because that sin will destroy you. See, that's a real shepherd's heart. See, I don't want you to do that because I know that will destroy you. That, that, that one thing there, that will totally destroy you. I love you, but I hate that sin. But a self-righteous person, and there's a lot of fathers and mothers are like this too. A lot of fathers and mothers are like this. You knew better than that. Why did you do that? You're just like your mother. You had no consideration of your father whatsoever. Oh, I could milk that, but I'm going to back off. I'm not going to milk that no more. How many gets the point? What? No wonder John says, oh. What manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God? What manner of love is that? What manner of love that God would love me and not even look at my sins? Oh, did he brush them under the, under the rug? No way. Jesus bore it all. It's paid for. My justice, my holiness has been intact. Because Christ, my oldest son, Jesus, my only son at that time, bore it. Never point at your kid and project your anger into your child. I'm dealing with people today that still got that thing in them because their parents didn't know how to show them, honey, we love you. But that thing that you're doing 
will destroy you and our relationship. You must see the danger of that sin. And everything is not sin. There are just certain things that are not wise to do. They're not appropriate. They're, they're not gosha. They're not pleasing to the Father. And there's things that your children will do, and it's not sin, it's just you realize it's not pleasing. It's, you know, we understand that? Don't make your kid think everything he does is sin. That's why people are so sin conscious today. They can't get on this side of the cross and see the liberty of sons. For God has set us into liberty. And that's why the Bible says, stand fast in that liberty where with Christ has set you free and don't be entangled in the yoga bondage anymore. Get out of that religious mold and get into the presence of God and realize that we are in Christ and Christ is in us and we are the victorious ones because of Him. Because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Because He lives, we overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. God has done a great salvation. No wonder the Hebrew writer said to the Hebrews, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This thing is so far beyond anything that any of us can, can conceive because it goes out throughout eternity what God has promised to those that love Him. And I can't serve Him? I'm sold out. I am sold out. Ask yourself the question. And I'm going to be building on this as we move along. Because I tell you, be sold out. Because that's when the power will be invested. God has given us the authority and the power to become born again by His Spirit. He has done it, and we have to receive it. Not what you're doing how much are you receiving now that you have received? The doing that you are doing is generated by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And there's no struggle. Sheer joy to come to church. Sheer joy to sit down and read the Word of God. Sheer joy to pray. Can't hardly wait to expose my heart before my Father in heaven. For Christ has brought me back to the Father. We are all back to the Father if you've been born again. And our, our greatest desire should be to please the Father. That's mine. You ask yourself a question. You ask yourself. I'm not accusing anybody. But sometimes we need to be stirred in our minds. My. What manner of love is this? That the Father, I don't know if we know it. Well, I'm going to say one more thing, then we'll quit. I believe that the degree that I love the Father, I will love each one of you. I believe the degree that I love the Father, I will love my wife. I believe that the degree, and there's degrees. Paul mentioned that, that we might know the height. Huh. The depth, the width, and the length of his love. The degree that we love God will be the degree that we have the power through the Holy Spirit to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now you think about that. Love is so powerful. I won't do it. Because I know that wouldn't please my wife. I won't do it because it doesn't please the Father. Nothing wrong with it. But I don't think the Father... You see, it might get in the way of my relationship with the Father. Can we understand that? And I don't want nothing. I'm enjoying that intimate relationship with my Heavenly Father. Now that Jesus Christ has brought me back to the Father, He did it by His grace and His mercy. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank You.